Hey there, Ride the Car Guy here, and today let's talk rib nuts. Now, I've recently had a little issue with my Titan, and I've decided that I'm going to fix the issue with rib nuts. Now, if you're an Xterra owner, you're probably familiar with rib nuts. It's what holds the entire luggage rack on. They're known for going bad, they'll end up spinning, and they need to get removed and replaced. So I use this opportunity to pick up a rib nut gun and to show you how to use it. I just picked this one up on Amazon. It's called the New Master and it had good reviews. It was about 50-ish dollars and of course I'll put the link in the description if you want to pick this one up. Comes with eight different mandrels, some in metric, some in SAE. Of course the gun, which feels like it's pretty decent quality. We're gonna find that out here pretty quick. And of course 10 riv nuts in each size to get you started. The idea is really simple. It's like a standard rivet where you're gonna crush a certain zone of it or like pull it tight, but this one has threads on the inside. So we're just gonna screw it onto a mandrel and then basically just pinch it down around whatever sheet metal you want it attached to. Using it's pretty simple. You've got to first choose the right mandrel for the rib nut you want to put on. I'm going to demonstrate on the bench with a quarter inch. And so we just take off the top piece here, slide it up. And then on the inside, you just push down. So like push down with your finger on this piece here. And then you should be able to unscrew this. There you go. Grab the correct size mandrel you want. Slide the sleeve down again, screw it in, and then line up the little notches there and let go. So now that's in place. Screw the securing nut at the top and you're ready to rock. When you're ready to go, open up the handles all the way, screw on your rib nut, and now when you let go of the handles, you're going to have a little measurement here. And in this case, it shows me, well, it shows me four millimeters. I'll probably want to adjust that because the crush zone on these is six millimeters, but regardless, uh, it's going to show you how much you're going to crush it when you pull the handles all the way down. To adjust the stroke length, take the rib nut off, loosen this piece here, and then when you slide this center sliding piece, it will adjust how much you pull the rivet. So I probably want to go further. Let's take a look here. There we go. Slide this back on, try it again. Yep, a little bit better, but I'm going to keep going. I want to be around six millimeters. All right, I was turning it the wrong way. The further out that this outer sleeve slides up, the longer the stroke, not the other way around. So uh, I have it right around six millimeters and let's go demonstrate this on a little piece of steel here. So I have a random piece of bent steel here, pre-drilled holes, nice and easy. And the idea is here, you wanna slide it in and then just compress it like that. There we go. And then once it's in and crushed, you just spin this out to get your mandrel stem out. And there you go, it's installed. So now you have yourself a nice threaded hole inside of this steel. Now let's get to a practical example on the Titan. Now here's the issue we're having with the Titan. We have this little skid plate here, which is kind of a generous term considering the thickness of the steel, but it's uh, protecting the underside of the engine. And it's held on by four bolts, two up front, which are fine, and two in the rear, which are not fine. This one's seized, and when we try to take it out, it's gonna snap. This one has already snapped off, so this thing's literally just flopping around down here. And frankly, it's driving me crazy. So that's what we're gonna do with the rib nuts. We're gonna drill out this hole, pop a rib nut in here, and do the same over on this one. I'm assuming, and I hope that this is the case, that when they install these, they don't have any fancy like welded nut on the other side. It's probably just a hole that they tapped with threads to screw this into. So if there is a nut back there, we're gonna have some problems and gonna have to think of something else, but uh, I'm hoping that's the case, so let's find out. Since this side is already destroyed, we're gonna start here and make sure this is a feasible option for us. It's looking pretty good. Now, I got it most of the way drilled through and then I just popped it out with a punch. Uh, so that way I'm just not fighting the bolt. And uh, it looks like there's not a nut on the other side, which is fantastic. There's a little piece of bolt in there somewhere, but that's really not a big deal. And it looks like we'll be able to crush our rib nut around it, which is awesome. I forgot to mention as well, the uh, manual tells you what drill to use based on what rib nut you're using, which is pretty nice. So just reference that to figure out what size, but I went ahead and drilled the proper hole, make sure that the rib nut fits in there. Ooh, yeah, fits in perfectly. And then now uh, I'm probably just gonna spray a little tiny bit of paint here. There's rust all over this thing, but might as well uh, try to avoid it if we can, because it's all just raw steel here. And then we're just gonna go pinch this down. All right, I set all the parameters of the gun, just the depth before uh, coming down here, which I encourage you to do as well. Then just slide it in. 
and let's squeeze it on here. All right. Really fun working overhead with this. Let me get all this crap out of the way here. All right, let's see if I can dislocate a shoulder here. Did I break something? Okay, so, oh, bummer. All right, so that snapping sound was actually not good. <sighs> I broke the threads. Oh yeah, look at that. Whoops, it's a little too strong on it. So my stroke length, based on the how much I had to crush it, was probably way too long. I just forced it, which, you know, kind of my style, but this is what happens. So now, what we probably have to do, not probably, I need to re-drill it. <laughs> Super cool. So I'm gonna drill this one out and try it again. I'm basically just trying to knock the front flange off, which appears to be working. And then hammer, yep, then hammer it through the hole. Nice. There's some holes in the frame here, so it'll come out, you know, kind of just vibrate out at some point. I'm not really too worried about it being up there. So let's try this again. All right, I adjusted the stroke length. I, uh, I cut it in half actually, and then we're not just not gonna force it. So I'm going to three millimeter, because you can always do more, you just can't do less, right? There we go. Oh, that felt much better. So let's pull this out. Turns out it doesn't take a lot of force. Uh, let me grab the little nut, or bolt that is. Make sure it's in there. Oh yeah, it's in there. Oh, that is perfect. So now I just gotta repeat that on the other side. Well, I have some good news. I went to go take this out and it actually backed out without issue. So uh, yeehaw, I'm already done and didn't even know it. I'm just gonna leave this one as it is for now. And when it does break off, I'm prepared. That's pretty much it. I really avoided dealing with rib nuts in the past. I kind of thought they were more complicated than they were. It turns out they're really not. I will say though, these guns come in two sizes. You can get a 16 or a 10 inch. 16, I mean, now that I know the stroke length and make sure it's appropriate, it's nice to have uh, the additional leverage, but it's also really easy to overpower the rib nuts uh, with the 16 inches of leverage. So I basically just pushed a little too hard and just snapped the threads right out of it. That could also be a testament to the quality of the rib nuts that actually come with the gun. Regardless, I'm happy to not have this rattling under the truck anymore, and I'm gonna go buy an actual bolt. That's just like a cheap little screw that I found that fit, but I'm gonna go get a nice proper M6 to put in there, and, uh, and then I'm done. If you like this video, I hope that you scroll down and click that like button. Make sure you subscribe for more content like this. And if this video helped you save some time or money, you can say thanks by buying me a beer. Just scroll down and click that thanks button to do that. All right guys, till next time.